What if instead of being thrown away, the thousands of items we set out for the trash were renewed? They could stay in our homes, workplaces, and gathering places, part of the beautiful surroundings for us to spend time together or alone, in contrast to being collected without purpose in landfills across our planet. Each of us possesses the ability to transform, improve on, and personalize the items we use daily, just as another craftsperson or machine made them in the first place. Take this chair. Made years ago, its seat is missing, its protective finish is worn through and peeling. It may seem that its usefulness has ended, but that is still in our hands. In many cases, finished wood items are sanded so that they are attractive and safe and pleasant to the touch. This can be done with a power sander or all by hand. I began with a rough, low grit sandpaper, such as 80, to sand the entire chair, and then increased to 120 grit. When hand sanding, I rub the sandpaper in the same direction as the wood grain so as to not create new scratches. It is joked that woodworking is 99% sanding. This is nearly true, and the results are worth it. To build a new seat, I laid down a board for the base and traced around it. The cuts with the circular saw were not perfectly straight, but this board was to be covered by fabric, so the edges did not need to be perfect. I made the seat fit better on the chair by notching the base to receive the steel, or the vertical part of the backrest. I chiseled away that part of the wood. Then I traced the shape of my base onto the foam rubber padding that I found and used a fresh utility blade and straight edge to cut the cushions to shape. The fabric I used is from two pairs of ripped jeans. I cut the legs to the appropriate length I needed then cut stripes out of those pieces. Next I began sewing a double stitched seam. I sewed two strips together half inch from the edges. The top sides of each strip had to be facing each other because I then unfolded the strips now sewn together and sewed another stitch on the outside of the seam. I wanted the yellow thread to show, but the second stitch could have been made on the inside to be hidden. To make sure the cushions would not shift on the base, I adhered them with rubber cement. The bond is instant and the surfaces need to be pressed together so they will not come apart. stapled opposite edges of the cover to the bottom of the base and hammered the staples flat. Next was the tricky part, tucking the fabric under itself at the corners. This took practice and it helped to cut excess fabric off and keep it taut while working. It would be okay to mess up here. The staples could be pulled out and you could start over. With the cover stapled to the base, I simply screwed the finished seat to the chair, making sure I had screws that only went into the wood and not into the foam cushion. I also tightened the screws by hand so that it wouldn't strip the wood. That completes this chair. It's gone through many changes in its existence, and this surely won't be the last, but for now, I will enjoy it.